Trying to tackle the problems associated with homelessness in Spokane can be overwhelming. Now, police are trying a new approach to an old problem. Thunderstorm just moved through downtown Spokane within the last hour. I'm tracking where that is heading next and how many more showers to expect for tomorrow. Make them feel comfortable. Uh, to know that they feel safe and we can assist them better. The Spokane Valley Fire Department has a new tool for responding to fires, weighted blankets. Firefighters say they can calm people who are in crisis, stressed, or having a bad day. Well, get a load of this rain and even hail in this video falling across the inland northwest tonight. This was just about a half hour ago in Spokane. This is from our viewer Nathaniel Cutshaw. So we thank Nathaniel very much for mm -hmm. sending this along. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. The windy weather we're seeing also putting much of our region under a red flag warning until later tonight. Want to get straight to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Weather Center with more on that, Thomas. Yeah, it is a lot to talk about in the weather world, at least as of this moment. Had a heavy downpour move through downtown Spokane. I want to just mention that this is a really localized incident. So many of you that aren't living in Spokane, actually probably had a nice day, but that's the heavy storm. That's the one I'm still tracking a little bit of lightning as it's crossing the state line right about now. So that is moving right along I 90 towards Post Falls and towards Coeur Lane. So here's the estimated timing for that Post Falls. If it's not raining now, it's going to be within the next five minutes here. Coeur Lane Hayden between about 620 and 625 is when that rain or some heavy rain will start to fall in and around this area. You'll even be able to hear a few rumbles of thunder from this isolated thunderstorm cell. We'll widen it back out. Notice that most of the showers are just that light shower. So it's just that one bully storm that is moving along I 90 right now. You see that off in the distance looking east from downtown Spokane. Now the other side of the weather story, the red flag warnings because it's been so dry and so windy. Kind of interesting to say, you know, there are storms and dry at the same time, but it's two different parts of our viewing area. I'll be covering what that means in terms of our wildfire forecasting for the rest of the night and how many more showers to expect for the day tomorrow. That in just a few minutes. Thank you, Thomas. Meantime, the Spokane Police Department is taking a different approach to try and deal with problems associated with the city's homeless. They say their neighborhood resource officers are just overwhelmed. Now as Krem 2's Alexa Block explains, they're getting some help. The downtown Spokane Plaza and the adjacent dog park are new to the area, but the problems police have seen lately aren't new. I walked through it yesterday and there's human feces and needles and trash piled up already. Spokane police say issues like these stem from people living on the street drug usage, there are assaults, there are thefts, there are robberies, there's vandalism, and those crimes are sometimes associated with this population. And so we need to, it's, we're obligated to, it's our job to stay on top of that. And it's been difficult, especially for neighborhood resource officers who mainly deal with ongoing non-emergency issues. In one case, I know one of the NROs told me 80% of his time was dedicated to these transient camps. And so he wasn't able to get any of his other work done and meet the needs of the other the community members. And so the department is trying something different. Two full-time police officers are working with the Code Enforcement Unit and Spokane Parks and Recreation to focus on homeless encampments. For a month this summer, two officers will join the team from another unit. City officers will basically handle the law enforcement end and any kind of protection that needs to be done with those groups as they go out to clean these camps up. After that month, the department will look at their progress to see if the new approach helps solve the old problem. If we do a good job and we begin to solve those problems and we can tailor that back, we will. If not, we'll have to see what happens and go from there. In Spokane, Alexa Block, Crime 2 News. A backlog at the Washington State Patrol lab is leaving families who've lost loved ones in the dark for months. The Spokane County Medical Examiner's Office relies on the lab to perform their drug and alcohol testing. On average, it takes the lab more than five months to complete the tests. The Spokane County Medical Examiner tells us the backlog is adding a burden to grieving families. One mom we spoke with earlier this month told us she likely won't know how her daughter died for another five to ten months. The backlog has other impacts as well. WSP tells us it's slowing the processing of DUI cases. Tomorrow night, four of the five candidates for Spokane Mayor will be taking the stage at the Downtown Library. Community radio station KYRS is hosting a candidates forum. Ben Stuckert, Sean Poole, Jonathan Bingle, and Kelly Cruz will all be there. 
According to KYRS, voters will write the questions. And tonight, our political reporter Casey Decker wraps up his series interviewing all five candidates in depth. And Casey's here now. Yeah, hey guys. Well, tonight at 10 and 11, we'll air the excerpts from an interview I just did today with Sean Poole. And last week, I sat down with Nadine Woodward, Jonathan Bingle, and Kelly Cruz. Yesterday with Ben Stuckert, I asked all five candidates about their stances on issues like homelessness, public safety, and the economy. Here's a little taste of those interviews and some of the messaging you're likely to hear if you go to the forum tomorrow night. I think it's extremely important to listen. And for some reason, um, politicians think that that's a weakness, that they have to have an answer for everything. But I, what I've loved in, in campaigning in this race is getting out and just talking to the people, but more important, listening. It needs to be what you want Spokane to be. Everything isn't just about what Spokane is. It needs to be about what we want Spokane to be. We want to be a community of diverse voices, of diverse nationalities, and diverse ideas. I take a real simplistic approach to problem solving. You know, we as a society do a really good job of identifying these multifaceted uh, problems. But then we want to turn around and, and try and develop these multifaceted complex solutions for them. And I don't think you need to do that. To beat them just requires, if you don't have the same advantages they have, the only way to overcome that is really hard work. And so that's how we're overcoming all of that is just by out hustling everybody else. Nobody will say that they worked harder than I did. As chair of Spokane Cops, I have an extensive knowledge of public safety and work closely with our officers in the community and stuff on particular issues and right now homeless camps and homelessness seems to be a big issue and how we deal with those folks and there's all different aspects of that so uh, that's just some of the things that I can bring to the table. By tomorrow morning we'll have the complete transcripts from all five interviews posted on creme.com. Four of them are already up as you can see there so maybe peruse them before you head down to the library tomorrow night. Again that forum is 6 30 p.m. downtown at the library. All the candidates except Nadine Woodward will be there. We're told, we are told Woodward couldn't make it because of a previously scheduled campaign event though she has said she's open to participating in future forums. Mark Jane. All right Casey thank you so much. In other news a sergeant and his canine partner made an unusual find in the Okanagan National Forest. They came across two suitcases full of methamphetamine. Take a look at that. Deputies with the Okanagan County Sheriff's Office say the suitcases weigh more than 180 pounds and the value of the drugs estimated to be $1 million. The bus was part of a smuggling investigation between the Okanagan County Sheriff's Office and Homeland Security. Trying to find those really low levels in a, in a sample that's pretty complicated and pretty messy is, is, a, is a sophisticated technique. But in the end, it is uh, measuring some stuff in sewage. He's talking sewage. That's right. Believe it or not, what you flush down the toilet is helping researchers understand marijuana use in Washington state. A team of researchers are analyzing wastewater samples collected from 2013 through 2016. And researchers chose this time period to see if there was an uptick in use after Washington legalized marijuana in 2014. When compared to cities around the world, get this, the Puget Sound area is the world leader in cannabis use. Western Washington beat out Amsterdam and the Netherlands too. Members of the Washington Liquor and Cannabis Board say these findings are extremely helpful when trying to understand the growing industry. The researchers did want to point out that the samples are anonymous. A little bit of a disagreement could be brewing between a University of Idaho alum and his alma mater. He's created a beer that he calls Vandal Beer. Part of the money made from selling that beer would go towards scholarships at the University of Idaho, but the school told him not so fast. As Krem 2's Taylor Bido explains, UI says he's violating their trademark. Yeah, well, the guy behind the project says he just wants to give back and make a difference, especially using something just about everyone likes, beer. U of I says they appreciate the idea, but their vandal trademark is something out of practice that they need to protect. Vandal beer is about making a positive and intentional impact. That's the start of a promotional fundraising video aimed at thirsty University of Idaho fans. Its product, a gold pale ale, presumably a gold inspired by U of I's logo. It started when I was down here at the University of Idaho as a student. 
I was inspired by the people I met down here, the, the individuals that I met while going to school. That's the man behind the project, Austin Nielsen. He says he has experience in the brewing industry and wanted to create Vandal Beer to give back. On the beer's Facebook page, the company says that 10% of all sales of these suds will go towards U of I scholarships and a separate, quote, community fund. Let's do something positive that really showcases what we're all capable of when we come together. But there's a minor holdup. This part that says Vandal, the vandals in these administrative offices aren't too keen on that. A U of I spokeswoman confirms that the school sent a letter to Nielsen telling him to stop using the Vandal name. Why? Simple trademark infringement. The same spokeswoman tells me that U of I appreciates the idea along with anyone being passionate about scholarships, but they say there are procedures to properly using the Vandal name with a product. They want to make sure they're protecting the school's reputation. U of I says Nielsen approached them about the Vandal beer some time ago, but the school told him he could not use the name. Despite that, it appears Nielsen pressed on with the idea. There is a disclaimer on his website that says the beer and the university aren't officially affiliated. I did touch base with Nielsen today. He said he wouldn't be able to make a statement on this until Friday. Meanwhile, U of I says they haven't heard back from him yet, but hopefully they can work together to resolve this. If not, the school says legal action could be possible. In the studio, Taylor Vido, Graham Tunings.